Well, what is up, YouTubers? Welcome back to my channel, Coding with Amanda Chow. Well, I'm Amanda Chow, and today we're going to do something just a little bit different. Um, I told you guys that I was going to do a video about um, infusions, all right? So infusions are very important to coders, so that's why I thought it was so important to bring you guys this content. So this video might be a little long, so I guess I'll go ahead and jump straight into it, okay? Without all of my usual antics. I have another video for that, okay? But anywho, I hope you guys are having an amazing, uh, amazing Sunday. So let me go ahead and start sharing this screen. And uh, please bear with me uh, because I don't normally do this. So uh, I might have a little technical difficulties. So let's try to share the screen so I can pull up my PowerPoint so we can learn all about infusions today. I am so super duper excited. Oh my God, I'm so excited. So let's see if I can't share the screen. Let's see, there we go. Mm, share. There we go. And there I am up there. Woo, woo, woo. Okay, y'all. Let's talk all about infusion coding. 101 with who? Amanda Victoria Chow. That is me. We're going to talk all about infusions today. I'm so super excited to bring you guys this content. It took me a while to work on this PowerPoint, and I know I was promising you this, and I just couldn't get around to it because these things are time consuming. But this is important to every single coder. If you are going to work uh, at any facility um, in, in coding ERs, emergency room visits, um, that's normally where you're going to see the bulk of all of the infusions, unless you work in like a heme hematology, oncology, and you are a person that just does a lot of um, coding for chemotherapy. That's a lot of infusion stuff. So if you work in a facility like that, this will also be detrimental to you. Uh, but definitely anybody who is interested in working uh, for the Department of Veterans Affairs and becoming a coder there, they need to know infusion coding, okay? So let's go ahead and jump right into this thing because it's really not as hard as people make it out to be. Uh, at first, when I when I first got to the Department of Veterans Affairs, that's when I started learning infusion coding because prior to that, like I was an orthopedic surgery coder and really we were just coding like the hardcore surgery. So I wasn't really doing any a lot of like infusion, infusing things, okay? I, and I had no need for that. I was just doing the 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 major part of the surgery okay so when i came to the department of veterans affairs my world changed i had to learn this stuff so uh once i did it a few times and i learned the rules then it, it became easy so now it's like easy and it's it is really it's not hard as long as you pay attention to these rules and these things that i am going to tell you i'm being ready to give you the drip okay so again this is infusion coding 101 with me now let's go to the next slide Infusions are common in the emergency department, as I just said, okay? In, infusion therapy, the intrafusion, intravenous administration of medications of, of a, over a defined period, okay? So that's what that, so that's what it means. Like, they're going to be infusing some, infusing some type of drug into your body over a defined period of time. So uh, the drug could be therapeutic, it could be diagnostic, or it could be prophylactic, okay? It could be any of those things, but you still have to learn these codes, okay? Regardless of what it is, all right? So the next slide, infusion injection decision tree, okay? So the things that you really need to know, like when you go to, um, to code these infusions, okay? Because if somebody is getting an infusion service, why are they there? So why is the patient there to get the infusion, ser uh, infusion service? Do they have like a cancer? Do they have rheumatoid arthritis? Um, like why, why do they come in to get this therapy? Okay. So it ha that has to be documented. Like if you ever come across a note and the provider didn't document it, why in the world they are getting that drug infused, then you need to query the provider because that would be incorrect. Okay. Because we can't play guess uh, on people's medical records. That's a no-no, and that is what gets people in trouble. That is what gets coders in trouble. Never play guess. If you don't see it documented, then baby, in our world, it's not done. So what you need to do is go back and query the provider, but never play guess, okay? So um, wh what did the patient receive, okay? What what type of drug did the patient receive? Um, was it uh, Kenalog, Toradol? Like, what was it? Um, it's, a whole, it's a whole variety of drugs. 
but you definitely want to know what is infusing. Also, the reason why it's important to know what is infusing is because that's going to play a big role in what CPT codes you use, okay? Because it's certain, it's certain uh, codes for hydration. So if you know normal saline is infusing, then you're going to use the hydration codes, okay? It's, uh, it's certain therapeutic drugs. So if those are infusing, you're going to use that code set. And then if it's, if it's chemotherapy, it's a specific code set just for that as well. So that's why it's very important to know what is infusing, because if you know that, you'll be able to go specifically to the book and find the codes that you're supposed to be using, okay? So how was it given? Okay, how was the drug given? Was the drug given through an IM injection? That means an intramuscular injection. Did they stick the needle directly into the muscle? Was the drug given through the vein, okay? Was it, was it an IV through the vein? Um, did they push the drug through um, or, or did they just infuse it, oh, infuse it over a period of time? These are all things that we need to know. Uh, how was it given? And the last but not least is how long did it take, okay? That's a very, very important thing is how long did it take? That's going to matter, matter so much once you get into this. You will be looking at time. Okay, time matters. Okay, time matters. Hear me clearly. Time matters. You will screw up if you do not pay attention to time because certain CPT codes are time-based codes and the infusion codes are a set of codes that are time-based. Okay, so you will screw up your code if you do not watch that time. Okay, so moving right along. It's all about the hierarchy of things. Okay, Hierarchy means that certain codes trump other codes, okay? Which means they're higher. They have um, higher money attached to those codes, okay? So apparently somebody getting um, infusion of a chemotherapy drug is going to be a higher value than somebody just getting an old injection of an allergy medicine or, or you're getting something for pain, right? So hierarchy uh, matters. So chemotherapy is primary to diagnostic and prophylactic therapeutic drugs, infusions, okay? So if you see that, you know, that trumps anything else. It's the highest of the high, basically, in the infusion world, okay? Diagnostic, prophylactic, therapeutic is primary to hydration. Hydration is the lowest thing on the totem pole, okay? And then infusions are primary to pushes, okay? And pushes are primary to injections. All right, so you keep hearing me say primary, 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 primary this, primary that. It's because you can only use one initial code uh, per encounter, basically. So you need to know what is primary, okay? Did he have, did, they, did the patient have an infusion of chemotherapy and hydration? Like, because if so, you couldn't use a primary, an initial chemotherapy um, uh, infusion code and uh, initial hydration code. So you can't use two initial codes. So you have to figure out what ranks the highest because that is the initial that you will be using, okay? Now, let's move right along, y'all. This is good. I got some examples at the end of the slide too, okay? Uh, then we have, um, again, the hierarchy. I just want y'all guys to see that chemo, chemotherapy is first. Um, chemotherapy, IV, wait a minute. Whoops, chemotherapy, IV push, then chemotherapy injections, then uh, therapeutic, prophylactic, or diagnostic infusions, then after that, therapeutic, prophylactic, or diagnostic pushes, and then after that, therapeutic, therapeutic prophylactic, or diagnostic injections, and like I said, hydration is the last man on the totem pole, and that actually got chopped off because uh, a chemotherapy infusion should be primary to the push. Okay, so excuse my boo-boo, I cut that off. A chemotherapy infusion should be right here where I'm moving my little arrow, and it's primary to the chemotherapy push. Okay, so moving on down. Again, we always want to pay special attention to what is being infused, very, very important, the method and the time. As long as you can remember those three things, you're going to always go right on your infusion coding, okay? Because we definitely don't want to go left. We want to go right because we want the right code because we don't want to get dinged, okay? So, yeah, you got to pay attention to those three things. Now, let's talk about um, hydration for a second. Um, hydration is important. And uh, when I say hydration, it's just basically like um, 
saline. Like when you go to the emergency department and you're dehydrated, for instance, you know, you're looking all pale, honey, you weak. I know y'all done been dehydrated before. I have. I've done had to go out there for, um, for being dehydrated. And uh, when you are, they infuse this saline, this saline into your vein, you know, and they might infuse it over a certain period of time. But normally when they infuse it, don't you feel better? Yes, I feel much better after I have me some good old hydration therapy, okay? So um, basically that's what it is. Anytime you see um, they're infusion, infusing normal saline, uh, I think D5W, any of that, you know, that is um, hydration therapy. So the CPT code range for this is 96360 through 96361. And you can actually go look in your little book while we're doing this if you want to. Um, you won't be able to see my book. So it's really no need for me to do it, but you can. Okay, get, your, get out your CPT book because all of these, all of these drugs, all of these, not drugs, but all of these, all of this infusion therapy services in this book. See this book? Yeah, this is your friend. All right. So get out that book and you can kind of follow along. But if I hold it up to the screen, y'all won't be able to see that. I tried that last week. Didn't work. Okay. So uh, hydration is prepackaged fluids and electrolytes. Uh, CPT code 96360 equals 30, 31 minutes to one hour um, of hydration. If the hydration is less than 30 minutes, this is very important. This is a tip. If any time a provider reports less than 30 minutes, 30 minutes or less, you can't cope with the hydration. It has to be 31 minutes or more. So anything 30 minutes or less, you cannot charge hydration. And that is in your book, okay? So um Flushing the line, um, things that are not included are uh, with, the, with the service is flushing the line at the end of the infusion, the local anesthesia when you numb in the area, um, starting the IV line, supplies, tubes, syringes, all that stuff is included in the hydration service. So in other words, you can't charge for that, okay? You can't charge for any of that, starting the line, none of that, supplies, none of that. You can't charge for that. You can only charge for the service and then the drug, like the saline or the D5W or whatever is infusing, okay? Let's go on to the next slide. We're going to talk about um, IM injections or intramuscular injections. Intramuscular injections, often abbreviated as IM, is the, in is the injection of a substance into a muscle. Okay, this is very common in um, primary care. Okay, you're not going to get too complicated when you walk into your primary care office. If you hurt and they might shoot you in the muscle with some Kinolol or some Toradol or some prednisone or something like that, but it's never going to be too complicated, right? So uh, that's what IM injections is. And the CPT code for an IM injection is 96372, if you didn't know. 96372 was the CPT code for that. You could look it up in your book, okay? Next, um, intravenous infusion. Intra intravenous therapy, abbreviated as IV therapy, is a medical... Oh, I skipped over this, but I'll go back to it. It's a medical technique that delivers fluids, medication, and nutrition directly into a person's vein. So in IV, they're putting the needle into your vein to give you an infusion of some drug, all right? And let me go back up to the push because I missed that, okay? Intravenous push. An intravenous or IV push is the rapid administration of a small volume of medication into the patient's vein via a previously inserted intravenous catheter, right? So a push is not as long as an infusion. Matter of fact, anything that is, let's see, I believe it is 15 minutes or less uh, is, is a push. So if you, if you have something that is infusion, infusing and you see that the time is 15 minutes or less, regardless if they documented a stop time or not, it's an IV push, okay? It's not an, it's not an infusion, an infusion, okay? So... Um, an IV push, the CPT code is 96374 and 96375. So you can go ahead and you can look that up if you want to. Okay. And last but not least, we have um, a concurrent infusion, which is 96368. So concurrent is when multiple therapeutic or diagnostic medications are infused simultaneously through separate bags through the same IV line. Concurrent codes are not to be used for multiple drugs within the same bag. And um, they're only reported once per day to service. So that's not really that co uh, common that I see. I mean, I have coded um, concurrent infusions, but uh, I don't see them often. But one thing that I can tell you that'll help you figure out 
if it's a concurrent infusion is if it's running at the exact same time okay so i always pay attention to your times um and if you see two drugs in two separate bags running at the exact same time then the second service would probably be the concurrent infusion okay that's how i figured it out that's how i was taught and so that's the rule i follow so i always look for two drugs running at the same exact time in different bags okay then it's a concurrent infusion okay so next moving right along example time what's this okay example one example time summary will not include chemo oh okay i'm sorry y'all example time i just want to summarize um everything up and tell you guys that it's not that hard it's all about um like i said what's what's being infused the time that it's being infused and um as long as you know that and um, you learn the hierarchy rules you'll be able to figure all this stuff out so i didn't want to do um chemotherapy in this lesson because i feel like that's a whole different ball game okay it's it's the same but different but so i did it was too much to include here so i didn't want to do that so i didn't in include any chemotherapy um infusion codes or any of that i'll do that at some later time today we're just going to talk about uh, therapeutic diagnostic prophylactic infusions IV pushes and IM injections okay and some other time I'll do I'll get back around to the chemotherapy because uh, I might personally I would say that's a little bit harder um than just this this type of stuff okay this is basic because basically like you're going to go to the emergency room or whatever like you're going to see this type of thing you're never going to see like I doubt it I ain't gonna say never you should never say never right but rarely will you see them like doing chemotherapy in an emergency department okay so unless you actually work in like me i have to know how to do it because i work for like the department of veterans affairs and we have to know like everything we code it we code chemotherapy um hematology oncology but um a regular person on the outside like if you work at specifically at a clinic yeah you're gonna do it but if you are a primary care primary care coder who just working in primary care like you'll never see this you'll never see this stuff okay so i'm just letting you know so let's just do a few examples i did come up with a few examples for you guys and um let's see if we can do these examples honey they're kind of good okay so example one the scenario is um the patient if the patient has a diagnosis of bacterial enteritis and dehydration um is admitted to the outpatient department with orders for infusion of IV levoquin over two hours also has orders for Demerol and Reglan IV push after the above medications were infused nursing contacts the position due to the patient's low blood pressure and lack of urine output the MD orders three hours of intravenous fluids of Ringer's lactate for documented hydration okay so you guys can go ahead and pause the video if you want but I got to keep it rolling to see if you can figure it out all right and then i'm gonna move on to like the answer okay so the answer to that is the code assignment is going to be 96365 that's for the first hour of the iv levoquin you're going to have 96366 for the additional hour of the iv levoquin you're going to have 96375 for the sequential iv pusher demerol 96375 for the sequential IV push of Reglan. And then you're going to have 96361 three times for the IV um, infusion of hydration. Okay. And notice that you, when it was time to code the IV, I can't even point to it, but when it was time to code the IV pushes, right, we didn't use 96374 as our code. Why? Because the hierarchy says, that the therapeutic infusions like they trump the pushes right so you have the initial code the initial infusion code 96365 and then the additional so any other service would have to be like um sequence as secondary so you would have to use that 96375 instead of 96374 you can't use that because you would be using two initial services you can't do that okay and so the same thing with the hydration 
like you use the 96361 and not the 96360. 96360 is an initial hydration code. So if you look in your book, you'll see what I mean. So you can never use two initials. You can never. And that's the reason why you have to find out about the hierarchy. You have to know your hierarchy and what's highest on the totem pole. Okay, so that's the first example. I'm going to move on to example number two, trying to be speedy. Okay, so the scenario is the patient arrived in the emergency in the emergency department and received an intravenous hydration infusion with vancomycin for over one hour. How would the hydration and administration of vancomycin be reported? Let me read that again. The patient arrived in the emergency department and received an intravenous hydration infusion with vancomycin for over one hour. How would the hydration and the administration of vancomycin be reported? So you go, again, you can pause the video if you want, but I'm going to keep rolling on to the answers, so I won't make this video too long. You can pause it and do your answers and come back, okay? So um, answer for the example number two. Let's see. So the code assignment for that would be report CPT code 96365 intravenous infusion for therapy prophylaxis prophylaxis or diagnosis um, initial up to one hour for the service provided. This hydration service will be considered integral to the drug administration and not separately reported. Okay, so you notice that when uh, in this example, it says an intravenous hydration infusion with vancomycin. So when it said with vancomycin, that means like they're kind of running them both in the same bag. So if the hydration and the vancomycin, if that if the hydration is used to facilitate the vancomycin being infused, you can't code any hydration. It would be integral to the service. All right. So let's go back to that. I wrote a little note at the bottom. So when saline is mixed in a bag to help facilitate the administration of the other drug, you can't count the saline hydration service. So understand that, okay? So I hope you caught that, that's very important. Okay, let's do example number three. A patient with congestive heart failure with uh, given was given an IV bolus of amiodarone, I don't know if I said that right, at seven o'clock. At eight o'clock, an infusion of, Lasi of Lasix was started and ended at 1020, okay? Again, you can pause it and then I'm gonna keep rolling. Answer example three. So the answer for that is report code 96365, intravenous infusion for therapy, prophylactic, or di diagnosis, initial up to one hour for the intravenous infusion of Lasix. Report CPT code 96366, intravenous infusion for therapy, prophylactic, or di diagnosis, each additional hour for the additional hour of infusion. Report CPT code 96375, intravenous push each additional sequential push of a new substance or drug for the IV bolus of amiodarone. Okay, again, the primary drug service, if you go back to the hierarchy list in the previous slide, would be the 96365, okay? Now, you can't call the, the IV push 96374 because that would be two initials. And you can't do that. So that's the reason why we have to use the 96375, okay? So that is the correct way to code this one, okay? So number four, I only have six examples, so this won't be that bad. So the patient presents for a SQ, which is a subcutaneous injection of a therapeutic medication. What is the correct code to assign? Patient presents for SQ injection of a therapeutic medication. What is the correct code to assign? Okay. The answer is 96372. He's getting an intramuscular injection, basically. A SQ injection means um, intramuscular. So that's 96372. That's pretty simple. So those are simple things. And those are things like you'll just see in basic primary care. Like everybody does those. All right. It's not a big deal, basically. Okay. Example five, here's another one. So the patient proceeds to the emergency room dehydrated with severe nausea and vomiting. The physician orders IV hydration over two hours encompassing an IV push, okay? So it kind of gives you like the times and all of that stuff that is running. So he had a push at 9.30, he had an IV push at 9.30, and he had an IV infusion between 
9 and 11 45 so that's two hours and 45 minutes of um the IV infusion all right of the therapeutic drug basically so the answer to that would be 96374 that's how you would code it for the composing for the push for the initial push and then you would code 96361 times three for the hydration so um Again, 96374, in this case, look at your hierarchy. The push is the primary service, so you can use that code, the 96374. And the hydration is the bottom of the totem pole. So you have to use 96361. You can't use the 96360 for the initial because, again, you can only have one initial, which in this case is the 96374, all right? All right, and then we have one more example, and then we'll wrap it up, okay? So example number six is uh, a 50 year old male presents with severe abdominal pain and nausea times four days. An order is written, written by the treating physician for a 500 milliliter saline bolus to treat for dehydration, okay? Also 50 milligrams of Finnegan and one milligram of Dilaudid is given for nausea and pain at 205 by IV push, okay? The Finnegan does not relieve the nausea, so the physician orders for Zofran, eight milligrams and 50 mill milliliters IVPB and infused over 20 minutes. What are the correct administration codes? Okay, so that's a doozy right there. And like I said, once you learn the hierarchy, then uh, you'll know exactly what you're doing. So go ahead and try to work it out, but I'm gonna roll on and tell you the answers, okay? Just pause it and see if you can come up with it by yourself. Okay, so the answer is, uh, 96365 times one is going to be your primary service. That's your initial, that's your on the hierarchy list, that's what's highest, okay? So you got, that's for the eight milligrams of Zofran, all right? And then the next thing you'll code is going to be 96375 times one for the Finnegan. You're going to code 96375 times one for the Dilaudid. And last but not least, you're going to code 96361 times two for the hydration which was uh, one hour and 35 minutes long. So that's not bad. So I think, I thought that these were some pretty um, cool examples. And that's why I, I kind of searched the internet and kind of changed up some words and found it. But um, I thought this is cool. This is a starting point for um, any of you who may want to learn this type of stuff. So again, like pause the video and try to work the problems yourself and then come back. If you got a question, if you don't understand something, Drop it in the comments. I'll come back and answer it, okay? So um, in summary, how you code infusions, this is eight easy little steps, okay? So number one, you want to separate the medication categories, all right? So you want to separate the medication categories. Is it, you know, a therapeutic drug? Is it is it a hydration service? Whatever. Is it chemo? Whatever. Uh, you want to determine and code the primary service, the initial, all right, you got to find out what's what's the initial one because she can't have two initials. So it's very important for you to find out what's initial. And that little hierarchy thing I gave you is a perfect little tool uh, to help you along your way. Number three, you want to code additional uh, sequential, code any additional sequential infusions. Number four is code any IV pushes. Number five, consider overlapping concurrent time and code that. Um, number six, identify and code any SQIM injections given. Number seven, combine the same codes reported and submit with the correct quantity. Uh, so you always want to make sure you get your units correct on your drugs too. Um, for instance, like somebody might get insulin at nine um, and they might get insulin at 12. Well, you want to make sure you're adding those two insulins up. So they got like, let's see, four units of insulin at nine and then four units of insulin at 12. When you go code it, you want to make sure you're correctly putting eight units, okay? And not just four. You got to make sure you do that because just stuff like that, like is messing up the, the provider's revenue, okay? That's money. You have to understand that we get paid a lot of money to be accurate. And uh, that's why we have auditors and all this stuff. We get paid money to be accurate. So you must be accurate. All right, so pay attention to your units. It's important because um, the units, those drugs, you know, they do get reimbursed for that. So you're potentially like 
you know, shorting the provider out of money by not correcting, by, by not coding the correct amount of units, okay? And last but not least, least is consider and code additional services not noted above, such as the, any prolonged infusions, okay? So that is basically like the end of my presentation, but you can refer back to this, okay? Let me see if I can end this thing so I can talk to y'all for a second. Like I didn't have a, didn't do good at this last time when I was trying to stop this. Let me see, stop the share. Let's see, stop the share. All right, all right, so now I'm back. Okay, I'm back. So anyway, yeah, go back and look at this, like actually try to do the coding yourself and then pause the video and then see what I said was the answer, all right? And if you don't understand like how I came up with the particular answer, if you're confused or whatever, just shoot me a comment um, down there below and uh, I'll be sure to answer you. But if you are going to be working you know, in anywhere like emergency department or anything like that, you're going to have to know um, infusion coding. And it's just good to be able to put this type of stuff on your resume, right? Like you want your supervisors to know, yes, I can code infusions, no problem, okay? But again, working at the Department of Veterans Affairs, like you really have to know like everything. So I don't have a problem with coding infusions, um, hematology, oncology, any of that stuff. Like I'm, I'm just accustomed to, accustomed to it now. So it becomes very, very easy because coding is repetitive. So if you're new and you're afraid, like if you're a newbie person that's new and watching this channel, like don't get afraid of coding because it's really not as hard as people make it out to be. It's not hard, okay? You just have to pay attention, learn your rules. Like it's rules in this book. In this book, in this beautiful book, it's lots of rules for us and we have to learn them and if we can learn our rules and our times and all that stuff then you will not have a problem okay and anyway you can ask me maybe i can help you out all right so anywho i'm gonna go ahead and end this video for today but i do have a part two but i'm just not doing that for my desktop so stay tuned to my for my other video i'm gonna drop that one too honey i'm gonna help you stop getting dinged on your audits all right so anyway happy sunday you guys i hope you guys enjoyed the presentation if you have questions again drop your girl a comment below drop me a comment and i'll try to answer you okay have a blessed day bye